Hello everyone, my name is CMA Pompey Vani. Welcome back to CMA Modules. Today we will be recording a video lecture on module 1.7 trial balance. In this video lecture, we will be studying how to prepare trial balance. Uh, what all items are included, excluded from trial balance? This chapter is important for 7 to 8 marks. A long question can be asked, small, small objective question, one or two mark MCQ question, one line, two line, one word, two word questions can be asked. Overall, this chapter is important for maximum 10 marks. Now you can even get a long question that is journal, then you go for posting to ledger and then trial balance. We have, we have learned how to go for journal, how to prepare ledgers in our previous lectures. Today in this lecture, we will be covering trial balance. The process of accounting involves recording transactions in journal and thereafter posting them in their respective accounts in ledger. Correct. First, what you do is uh, from sales invoice, you post it to your journals and from journals, you post it to your ledgers. So the process of accounting involves recording transactions in the journal and thereafter posting them in the respective accounts in the ledger. At the end of an accounting period, these ledger accounts are balanced and now they are ready to be used for drafting of the financial statements. At the end of the accounting period, these ledger accounts are balanced. Okay, and that balancing figure is brought to trial balance. Uh, and now they are ready to be used for drafting the financial statements. However, before starting the process of financial uh, finalization of accounts, for ensuring the accuracy of accounting, a document is prepared using balances of ledger accounts after they have been closed. This, this document is called trial balance. The trial balance is a statement drawn up using ledger balances to test the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger accounts. So why do we prepare trial balance? Trial balance is prepared to test the arithmetical accuracy. It's a statement. It is not an account. It's a statement. So trial balance is a statement drawn up using the ledger balances to test the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger accounts. The primary purpose of drafting a trial balance is to ensure that there are no arithmetical errors. What is the primary purpose of drafting trial balance? Primary purpose of drafting trial balance is to ensure that there are no arithmetical errors. However, it is to be noted that after use of computers and accounting, the requirement of drafting trial balance has substantially reduced. Earlier, when we used to go for manual accounts, we were compulsorily required to draft trial balance just to check whether our accounts which we have prepared, they are arithmetically correct. But now, after the usage of computers, softwares, preparation of trial balance has come down. Serial number, okay, however, it is to be noted that after the use of computers and accounting, requirement of drafting trial balance has substantially reduced. It is a columnar statement having five columns. Serial number, name of ledger account, ledger folio, debit, account, debit amount, credit amount. In case of accounting happen to be correct and complete, the two amount columns of trial balance should tally, that is, be of equal amount. The performa of trial balance is as under. So they have given you trial balance pro forma. Here you will have a ledger folio. Folio means page number. So you are page number means uh, suppose in your ledger account uh, here you have mentioned uh, debtors. So debtors account page number will be two. So you go to page number two in your ledger book and there you can locate debtors account. So ledger accounts, ledger folio, debit balance or credit balance. Features of trial balance, very, very important answer, very important answer. Trial balance is just a statement, not an account. It forms no part of double entry system. Trial balance is just a statement, not an account. It forms no part of double entry system. It does not appear in actual books of accounts. It is usually prepared as a separate document. Okay, so you have a trial balance. Trial balance is just a statement and not an account. It forms part of double entry system. It does not appear in actual books of accounts. It is usually prepared as a separate document. It forms no part of double entry system. It does not appear in actual books of accounts. Even though I am preparing trial balance, it forms part of my procedure, but in actual books of accounts, it will not appear. It is usually prepared as a separate document. It is prepared as on particular date and not for a particular period. Today, on 4th March, I want to check my accounts. I can draft a trial balance and I can check. 
<clears throat> that is not like balance sheet that uh, on particular date only I'm required to prepare. A trial balance may be prepared at any time, say on monthly, quarterly, half yearly or on annual basis. However, it is to be noted that trial balance must be drafted at the end of every financial year, every accounting year before preparation of financial statements. If the books are arithmetically accurate, the total of debit balances must agree with the total of credit balances. The agreement of trial balance is only a prima facie evidence of arithmetical accuracy of books of accounts, but not a conclusive proof of absolute accuracy. So we have trial balance. Trial balance is just a statement and it is not an account. It forms no part of double entry system. It forms no part of double entry system. It does not appear in actual books of accounts. It will not appear in actual books of accounts. It is usually prepared as a separate document. It is usually prepared as a separate document. It is prepared as on particular date and not for a period. It is prepared as on particular date and it is not prepared for a period. A trial balance may be prepared at any time, say on monthly, quarterly, half yearly or annual basis. Any time you can prepare. However, it is to be noted that trial balance must be drafted at the end of the accounting year before preparation of financial statements so that we can check what is the arithmetical accuracy. Whether they are arithmetically correct, there, there is any uh, totaling mistake, all such mistakes we can identify. If the books are arithmetically accurate, the total of debit balance must agree with the total of credit balance. And the agreement of trial balance is only prima facie. So if the trial balance agrees, then my books of accounts which I have created, they are arithmetically correct. Absolutely, they are correct. Okay. Now comes the advantages of trial balance. The agreement of trial balance provides a useful check upon ledger postings. It proves that both the aspects of each transaction have been posted into the ledger, debit aspect on the debit side and corresponding credit aspect on the credit side. It proves, <coughs> sorry, it proves that the accounts are arithmetically correct, that is correct account amount has been written against each posting in the ledger. It facilitates preparation of financial statements by presenting the ledger balances in the summarized form. It acts as a connecting link between ledger accounts and the financial statements of an entity. So we have advantages of trial balance. So what all are the advantages? They have given four advantages. So the agreement of trial balance provides a useful check upon ledger posting agreement of trial balance so suppose my trial balance agrees that means the ledger posting which i have done is 100 percent correct it proves that both the aspect of each transaction have been posted into ledger debit aspect on debit side and credit aspect on credit side it proves that the accounts are arithmetically correct that is correct amount has been written against each posting in the ledger it facilitates preparation of financial statements by presenting ledger balances in the summarized form. So uh, agreement of trial balance is like uh, arithmetically it is correct. Uh, everything is written correctly. No debit credit writing error. Debit has been posted on debit side. Credit items are posted on the credit side. Amounts are also correct. It provides the preparation of financial statements by presenting ledger balances in a summarized form. It acts as a connecting link between ledger accounts and financial statements of an entity. Limitations of trial balance. Some of the limitations of trial balance are trial balance can be drafted only when books are maintained under double entry system of bookkeeping. As such, smaller concerns who do not follow double entry system cannot draft the trial balance. Agreement of trial balance is not a conclusive proof of absolute accuracy of books of accounts. It is only a prima facie proof certain errors do not get disclosed by trial balance. So we have limitations of trial balance. Some of the limitations of trial balance are trial balance can be drafted only when books are maintained under double entry system of bookkeeping. So if we follow a single entry system of bookkeeping, trial balance cannot be drafted. The agreement of trial balance is not a conclusive proof of absolute accuracy of books of accounts. It is only a prima facie proof. Certain errors do not get disclosed by trial balance. Then we have errors not identified by trial balance. Errors of omission or duplication. Errors of commission. Errors of principle. Errors of original entry and compensating errors. We have one chapter, rectification of errors. There you have a detailed mention of these errors. So these are the errors. So these errors you cannot identify thoroughly with the help of trial balance. You cannot catch it is which error with the help of trial balance. Trial balance is just a check 
one small check, arithmetical check. That's it. The errors and omissions not revealed by trial balance are errors of omission or duplication. Suppose duplicate entry, a trial balance will not be able to identify. Error of omission, trial balance will not be able to identify. An entry has been completely omitted to be recorded in the books of original entry. Error of commission, when a wrong amount has been entered in the correct accounts or a, a, or a account is involved while recording the transaction. Error of principal, recording not in accordance with accounting principles. Example, purchase of office furniture debited to purchase account instead of furniture and fittings account. Error of original entry, if the amount of transaction is entered incorrectly in subsidiary books. Compensating errors, two or more mistakes in the books which result in cancelling each other out. So, such type of errors are not identified. In fact, any type of error is not identified by trial balance. Trial balance can answer you only one thing. Arithmetically, it is correct or no. That's it. Preparation of trial balance. There are two recognized methods of preparing trial balance. They are total method and balance method. Total method, in this method, for each ledger account, the total of debit side and total of credit side are collected and placed on the debit and credit column of the trial balance. So we have total method and we have balance method. So both the sides, debit side and credit side are totaled together and trial balance can be drafted under this method even though the ledger accounts have not been balanced. Balance method, under this method, trial balance is prepared only after each ledger account has been balanced. So far, so for each ledger account, only one account, only one amount is posted in the trial balance. So we have total balance method and we have balance method. So what is total method? Total method means total of debit side and total of credit side are collected and we place debit side total on debit side and credit side total on credit credit side column on trial balance. Okay, now we have balance method. Under this method, trial balance is prepared only after each ledger account has been balanced. After balancing each ledger account, you prepare your trial balance. So balancing figure, you, you uh, transfer it to trial balance. Then you have illustration number six. So from the following ledger accounts, ba account balances, prepare a trial balance of Mr. Sen for the year ended 31st March 2022. Capital rupees 80,000, sales 10 lakhs, adjusted purchase 8 lakhs, current account that is credit balance. So on liability side, uh, or sorry, on credit side, Petty cash 10,000, sales ledger balance, purchase ledger balance, salary, carriage inward, carriage outward, discount allowed, outstanding expenses, prepaid insurance. So they have given us details related to trial balance of Mr. Sane. So trial balance of Mr. Sane. So what we did is we divided above uh, question into debit side columns and credit side columns. So adjusted purchase, they have mentioned here as um, a purchase, it's, it's purchase. Purchase is nothing but my debit. So I have debited. Then I have petty cash. Petty cash again has a debit balance. Sales ledger balance, again it has a debit balance. Purchase ledger balance, salaries, carriage inward, again they will be shown on the uh, debit side. Then we have uh, uh, carriage outward, discount allowed, building. Carriage outward will be shown on the credit side uh, and carriage inward will be shown. Sorry, carriage outward also it will be shown on the debit side. And carriage inward will be shown on the debit side. 